So yesterday I spoke to you a little bit about um, Facebook ads. I put a video out yesterday and I talked about buyer personas being the crux of a good Facebook ad. So just wanted to quickly expand on that and talk about you know personas. But up front, you probably want to know what's a persona and why do I need to use it? Well, if I tell you why you might want to use one and then get into the how afterwards or what you should be looking to do, then maybe it'll make it worthwhile. This video is going to be five or six minutes long, so I just thought I'd let you know now, just in case you wanna sort of switch off and go and do something else, but it could be a valuable piece of information. So, buyer personas, they help you create effective messaging. So, you know, you're spending time maybe writing some blog copy or putting stuff out on social media, but putting stuff out on social media for shares and likes is pointless. If that's what you're paying for, you're paying someone to get you shares and likes, and those shares and likes aren't turning into pound notes in the purse, forget about it. And anyway, if you, if you haven't got a persona, how do you know your persona needs social media? You don't know where they're operating, you don't know what channels they're using, because you're guessing, and if you're guessing, you're wasting money, so stop doing that. Um, what else will, a, will a, uh, a buyer persona enable you to do? It'll enable you to get high quality leads. And the reason you're gonna get high quality leads is because you're understanding more and more about the compelling aspects of your business that compel the buyer to buy from, from your business, right? And once you've got that down, of course you're gonna make headway, the quality of the leads gonna be better, the waste of effort's gonna be reduced, and you know people are gonna be more productive in the business. Also, you're gonna shorten the sales cycle. If you can shorten your own sales cycle by understanding more about your customer and not just being a generic, oh yeah, well my customer is a small business owner because I sell business coaching services. Well, thousands of people sell business coaching service and you know, you've got a niche, you've got to be a specialist at something. If you're just broad, oh, I'm a, I'm a business coach. Well, if I'm a tennis player and I want a tennis business, I want a sports, business coach. I don't just want a coach, right? So be strong at what it is you're trying to do. Um, you've got to assess the competition. It will help you assess the competition because by researching what's important to your personas or your potential customers, you'll find out what they find good about, their, about your uh, competitors and then you can use that to really you know, up your game and then by upping your game you should see an increase in leads and sales and you know, this is all all quite easy, you know? And then, realistically, you're gonna start understanding who you need to influence and how you reach them. Again, going back to my, um, my initial statement about social media, I really hate seeing people pay for social media for likes and shares. That is ego and vanity and doesn't earn you any money. If, you, if you're paying, what do I know? It's, I think it's roughly some, you know, four, 450 a month for a bit of Instagram marketing or whatever it is, and you know, two, three months go by and you haven't really sold anything and you might have some pretty, some likes and shares, but human nature says if we see something nice and we like the look of it, um, I can like that, you know, I can be on Instagram, go past the picture, I see something I like, I just click it and go forward. I've got no interaction with the brand or the person who posted it. It could just be a friend who's doing something, posting clothes or whatever it is, I like that picture, who cares, nobody cares, because that actually didn't turn into money. So you could get 35,000 of those, brilliant. Got 35,000 likes on my post. The only thing that's smiling is your ego. Your pockets aren't smiling, so forget that activity. If you can go back to finding out where your potential customers are online, you know, are they in forums, are they in Twitter, are they on Instagram, is it Facebook, when, what times, why at those times? If you really dig into understanding where, why, and how your client behaves, you're gonna have some really good success. And you know, I'm, I'm teaching a class about um, buyer personas. I'm gonna do an online webinar, and if it's something that you'd like to dig a little deeper into, um, you know, drop me a, a message in my inbox or leave a message underneath the video, and I'll try and sort of make something work that's worthwhile. This is really important for people that are building businesses and to just, to just dismiss this as, you know, something that's immaterial because, I don't know, you think that you're the subject matter expert so you should know what it is and who it is that you're dealing with. That's fine, I can't tell you that you're not, but typically without doing the research, 
it's all guesswork and with guesswork comes waste and if you've got money to burn brilliant but if you don't do the right things up front and work back to the data if you get back to the data you'll always drive forward from an educated perspective and education in business is key so that's me talking about buyer personas i'll follow this video up again in a few days time